Well, if you are like me, you like neon lamps. Like these ones, where you connect them to a voltage higher than 60 volts, they illuminate like this. And yeah, I'm not alone in this regard. That's why a lot of people love Nixies and everything related with neon lamps. It's just cool, it's different. And the neon glow has a specific wavelength, which is really close to fire. And it really looks really interesting. So I was thinking, why not make a VU meter with neon lamps? So here's my first prototype. It consists of 10 neon lamps side by side on a PCB and a crazy circuit uh, accompanying it. Well, I don't know if that's the right word for it, but yeah, that's how it is. You can see the audio input. Here's my test amplifier. I got my phone and everything set up here. So before I show you the circuit and all the theory with this why I don't just turn it on for you and show you why neon lamps are so great as a VU meter you can hear now all the different power supplies running in the background I haven't yet made a power supply that stand alone for the VU meter because it's quite complicated for what it does that's probably why nobody does this because you need a higher voltage for the neon lamps and you need a lower voltage for the yeah audio integration circuit that makes the shaping for the yeah VU meter circuit or and all of that so you need 100 something about 90 volts and 12 volts for the other thing it's not something you just have lying around for power supplies so yeah, that's why you can hear all the buzzing and the fans in the background. But yeah, let's turn it on. I think you get the idea. In real life, these neon lamps are much more defined. You can see the electrodes glow, stand alone, the phone washes them out. Even if you try to focus it, you don't really get the effect. But yeah, you can try this yourself if you want to see the effect in its full glory. Anyway, enough of this. So, why and how did I even come up with this idea? Well, I was looking through old electronics videos on YouTube and I saw something very interesting which is the linear neon lamps which were made in the USSR which are the IN9 and the IN13 and yeah this is pretty much a poor man's version of that I'm gonna edit or probably put in the description of the video some videos of the IN9 and the IN13 so you can see where I got the inspiration to make this neon lamp VU meter. Those tubes were not only used for VU meters, they used them for voltmeters and all kinds of things. 
you could do this with this as well, but it doesn't really, yeah, it's too low resolution to really work. So anyways, let me explain the circuit and how I, from where I built this. Here it is. This is the circuit. And yeah, this is the same circuit, but well, this is the original circuit, basically. Not really original because it already has the neon lamps and everything. So yeah, this is my circuit. And what's the difference here? Well, the difference is I have PNP transistors. That's the only ones I had on hand. And this one is with NPN transistors. And if you know a bit about electronics, you know, if you have an NPN transistor circuit, if you want to use it for PNP transistors, you switch all the polarized components around. So you can see this capacitor switched, this capacitor switched, diode switched, diode switch, 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 etc. And you obviously reverse the polarity because the emitter in this case from the PNP transistor is positive the collector goes to negative. Same here. Collector, negative 100 volts. Here it's reversed, positive 100 volts. And I mean, yeah, we have to keep into account these transistors have to be of a type that can handle a bit of a higher voltage. In this case, these BF421 transistors can handle up to 300 volts. And where do you get these transistors? Well, you get them out of old uh, electron gun amplifiers. That's where I get these all the times. Uh, all the time I get these from electron gun amplifier. Uh, from modern TVs, you will get an integrated circuit, which is kind of useless. But yeah, in all the TVs, you will find these discrete. And you can sometimes find the pair of these two because these are complementary transistors. They positive version, or in this case the N version, the, yeah, the NPN construction is the BF420 and the P version is the BF421. That's yeah, kind of explanatory. Yeah, these circuits don't really have anything super special going for them. The one thing you might be seeing is that I have 10 neon lamps and only six are drawn here, but can see the dotted line here this can keep going you can keep stacking these stages for almost as many as you want the only limitation is is the supply voltage of the shaping circuit which in this case is 12 volt and each of these diodes drops 0.6 volts so when you reach the maximum level that this can pull these transistors at some point you don't have enough voltage swing to turn these transistors on after like 20 diodes or so. But you can remedy that by increasing the voltage here and changing the bias on this so you have more swing. I might change this that it works off the high voltage at some point so the circuit can be run with a single supply and make this also a high voltage transistor that would be ideal so you don't have to have the 12 volts here and the 100 volts which are two different power supplies which are referenced on the same ground actually so you can you know that for beginners that's sometimes strange when you have two supplies but yeah they are referenced at this point so you have Positive of the 100 volts is here, negative here. Positive of the 12 volt supply is here, negative is here. And the same here, but reversed. You have positive here and negative on the common. Yeah, and that's pretty much everything about this circuit. I can maybe explain a bit how the function works, how the circuit works. It's not much. You have this pretty much diode chain, which, yeah, this transistor pulls pulls down then the voltage now actually this transistor is it's is switched on it works the current flows through this right here from the minus it goes through the diode 
then it goes into first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. If this transistor is not turned on, then all of these should turn on with this 1K resistor through all these diodes. Tick, 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 tick. All of these get power. But when this transistor turns on through the biasing resistor here, then this one pulls down and pulls this circuit to plus, and then no, no voltage is here, so these don't turn on. Then the audio comes in, this transistor starts to turn off, and then the voltage flows in here, and how much this transistor turns off is determined by the audio signal, which is shaped through this first diode, and then you have this integration capacitor. This capacitor determines how slow the response is with the audio, because yeah, it charges. If there's a lot of voltage, then this one charges. It stays charged for a while, so the display has a bit of more linearity. If you make this capacitor smaller, then you will see all the peaks and every single detail in the audio wave. When this capacitor makes some sort of integration here. And yeah, then this the more this transistor turns off, the more voltage flows in here and the more transistors here get turned on. And vice versa, if this one turns on, then yeah, more voltage gets pulled down here and less of these transistors will turn on. And that's the circuit. So yeah, that's gonna be the explanation for this. Just some interesting facts and details. And yeah, it's a fun circuit to try. Keep in mind, this is high voltage, so it can be a bit dangerous. So don't try to connect mains voltage there or anything like that. You have to have some an Nixie power supply. There's a lot of Nixie power supplies in the internet which are basically step-up converters with a 555 timer. You get something in a re regulated region from 80 to 150 volts. That could be ideal for this if you want to try this. Yeah, with that I'm gonna say goodbye and till the next time. Later.